Hey, what's going on? This is Bernie with CG Spectrum. Good morning. Or at least for people on the uh, west coast of <laughs> the US. Uh, how's everyone doing? I am doing good. I slept really early last night, so I feel better rested, rested than a uh, usual Monday morning. Hey, what's up, Glitter? How are you doing? Did you have a good weekend? Oops. Hey, what's up, Bastion? <clears throat> what happened, Glitter? Once again, I can't remember what I did over the weekend. <laughs> it's not like I'm drinking all the time where I forget I'm blacking out. <laughs> That's not what it is. Oh my gosh. What did I do? I guess I didn't do much. I just hung out with family, went swimming again, stuff like that. Uh, the weekend always feels short to me. <laughs> this whole year went by so fast for me. Do you do you guys feel like that? At uh, your age, around like, I don't know, I'm assuming you guys are around 20s. Your 20s, right? Most of you guys. I'm sure you hear this from all the old people, but uh, the older you get, it feels like time just goes by faster and faster. I remember when I was a kid, like in uh, junior high school, I'd be staring at the clock during class and wondering why time wouldn't go by faster. <laughs> so I could get out of class and do something that I actually like. Uh, but now it's the opposite, where I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, when did time go by? The whole day's gone, what do I do? I have so much stuff to do. Anyways, today we are gonna continue with this dragon chicken and see where it goes. Oh, did I tell you guys that, uh, I don't remember if I told you guys or not, but the uh, Dragon's Breath, this specific chicken that I have is laying eggs. She's been laying eggs for the past, uh, well, for about a week now. So I guess she laid an egg on Monday last week and I didn't know until the stream was over and uh, one of my kids told me that um, he couldn't find the, this chicken, Dragon's Breath, and then eventually he found her in the uh, nest box and she laid an egg. So every day she's been laying an egg. And the egg was kind of... Uh, Kind of a small it's it, i mean not kind of it was a smaller egg i think i get i think they call it like pullets pullet eggs so they're smaller but supposedly chefs around the world look for these eggs because um they don't sell them in the store but they're actually they actually taste much better and it does have like a uh, sweet uh, flavor to it not it's not like super sweet or anything but it has like a uh, sweet sweeter egg taste to it it's kind of hard to describe anyways but yeah every uh, day the eggs are <clears throat> getting bigger they're supposed to get bigger over time yeah back in my day <laughs> hey uh lord luigi 
Uh, I haven't seen you around either, Lord Luigi. <clears throat> What's up? Bonkers Terror? I haven't seen you either. Uh, what do you mean, be careful what you wish for? Oh, like, time, uh... Slowing down? Oh, yeah, 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 because when I was a kid, I wish it would go faster. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. I guess so. Now it won't stop. Hey, what's up, Renee? Good to see you again. Uh, Glitter is asking, are you going to give the uh, dragon chicken a background? Uh, probably not. You know how I feel about backgrounds if you're one of my students. Uh, backgrounds for concept art. I don't do it. I don't think it's necessary for uh, character art or creature designs. There are times when it's, it helps, but again, generally speaking, I'm not for backgrounds. <laughs> I just don't think it's important. Uh, I gotta figure out how to transition all this chicken skin into uh, the scales. You guys do anything uh, fun over the weekend? Anything different? For those who are uh, single or dating, I'm curious to how how you guys do all that during the pandemic. Like, how, how, what do you guys do? Or you guys just don't date? You guys just. <laughs> It just became even harder. <laughs> Man, it must be so weird. I mean... Yeah, I don't know. How things, like, because of the circumstances, how, how people have adapted to doing, diff you know, things that were normal before. I'm sure things have changed quite a bit. I'm, I'm asking because I see like couples at the restaurant, right? Um, yeah, and I'm like, I just wonder like, oh, I wonder how they met during the pandemic. I, I wonder like, you know, it's like you're limited to what you can do, right? So I just, I'm just curious to how it all works now. You guys meet up for like Zoom dates? How does it work? <laughs> like they're speed dating on zoom now where you like scope out the person before you don't turn on your video until you check them out and then you just exit out if you if they're not the way you want <laughs> you expected them to look <laughs> i don't know i'm just messing around <clears throat> renee says says art food and games are my only love <laughs> uh bonker says single and it was already impossible before so nothing changed <laughs> Oh my gosh. Sorry. Uh, Glitter says, take your iPad to restaurant and, and have Zoom date. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would imagine it, it'd be much harder to meet people like nowadays, right? Like when you're out and about. You can't even see their face. You can't see their expression. You can't see how creepy they look, right? To avoid them. <laughs> what kind of creepy look they're giving you. Uh... Yeah, it's just harder to approach people because people have, you know, you don't know what they're thinking. Like if they, if they want you to keep distance and things like that, right? 
people aren't as open to like chatting with someone they don't know. It's kind of weird if you think about it. Have any of you guys been to a figure drawing uh, session or whatever, like a workshop recently or after um, after COVID? And if you have, did the model wear a mask? Like, how does that work? Just says uh that's the live stream we saw in slack right i wasn't sure on how to enter it and watch it watch it what do you mean sorry elijah i don't understand what you're saying <clears throat> this this is the live stream you saw in slack yes i'm sure where you click on it sorry uh bonker says interacting definitely changed for me, it's mostly with Discord. Oh, yeah, I heard a lot of good things about Discord, but I never used it. I should try it out. <clears throat> what do you mean? How do you interact with people on Discord? You're talking about like friends you have before or just meeting with new people, like chatting with new people. Uh, Glitter is asking, how was Legoland? Uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, it wasn't crowded at all. Uh, so that was the best part about it. Uh, basically, we got on all the rides. We got to do everything at Legoland in one day. So uh, we had tickets for two days just in case, you know. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't crowded at all. So we just were able to go on everything in, a, in several hours. So the second day, we just went to the beach and just went uh, boogie boarding, stuff like that. The waves were pretty rough, though. We went like later in the afternoon and yeah, my, my, <laughs> my kids are pretty good at it. 
But then because the waves were pretty strong and they were coming from like different directions, <clears throat> when my kids went in the first time, they ate it. They just rolled and they got sand all over themselves, like their eyes and everything. And so after that, they were kind of scared to go back in. They still tried, and but then, you know, they're very hesitant. <laughs> uh, and then we actually went to uh, a VR place. There is a VR place in uh, around Irvine. Like in Orange County. And uh, we stopped by and played some games there. Uh, it was my first time doing uh, VR at an actual like business uh, where they have like the whole setup and it was pretty fun. It was just too short. I wish the games were longer and we couldn't do like the real like crazy VR ones because my kids were too young uh, because they <clears throat> have a setup like a chest thingy that you put on that's I guess 15 pounds so they were concerned that like you know younger kids wouldn't be able to do the you know whole game which is about 30 minutes to 45 minutes <clears throat> with a four I mean a 15 pound pack on them so we couldn't do that and we couldn't do any scary games like the fun ones where you're killing zombies and things like that anyways it was still fun Yeah, Elijah says, I thought it was a Zoom meeting or something. Didn't understand at the beginning it was a live stream on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it streams on a live stream on YouTube and Twitch and everything else. Uh, Bonker says, both new friends and old through Discord. You can join other Discord servers with lots of others. Awesome. <clears throat> what's new come on share with me what's going on in your lives
What are you talking about, glitter? Who's who's the guy from Respawn who wants to hire you? What are you talking about? Are you serious? <laughs> you joking around? Alright, this part looks weird. Uh, Elijah asks, do you use any reference for the lighting you're doing right now, or is it more about experimenting and finding out what works well? Uh, I'm not using reference for the lighting. Uh, I just always use the same lighting for 90% uh, of my uh, concepts, which is... at this angle, from the viewer's angle, top down, either anything within this range basically anything in between here nothing beyond this angle because I just the re, the way I light is just to get maximum amount of volume to show the maximum amount of volume in the concept without uh, additional rim lighting. Like rim lighting's cool too, but um, again, it's just extra. It's just more work, you know? We, but sometimes it helps. But, but again, 90% of the times I'll do it like this. So there's no reason for me to look at reference um, for lighting at least, because it's always around the same similar range. Hopefully that makes sense. And in this case, I chose to again light it from the uh, left side, slightly from the left left side. Uh, glitter. I have no idea who Theodore Mason is. I think, um, dude, actually, there's a lot of, uh, that might be, like, a, sp that might be, um, some kind of phishing, right, email, so you gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. There's a lot of that that's been going around with, uh, with an EA, so be careful, like, giving out personal information. I think I heard that even employees at uh, Respawn were getting uh, contact, contacted to work at Respawn. <laughs> so uh, yeah, be careful. I heard that people are even getting text messages uh, that are not really from EA or Respawn. So yeah, just be careful. I wonder how they got your information though, meaning like 
why how they got your email and stuff like that Anything fishy, I just don't respond to it at all. What, what were they saying in the uh, email? Like, specifically? Let me actually look up the name in the... Uh, see if someone exists like that within uh, Respawn. So I did a quick search with that name that you provided and nothing shows up. That doesn't mean it's not real because it could be, uh, you know, one of those uh, headhunters that work for, uh, work with EA or Respawn, not sure. But again, in the database, I don't see any one by that name. So they don't work uh, full time for us for sure. All right, at this point, I think I got to uh, just indicate. It's not like I want to render every, or that I should render every uh, scale or whatever. So I'm just gonna try to indicate at this point.
Ah. I thought I was feeling good this morning and then now it's hitting me all of a sudden. I gotta go back to bed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I woke up too early. My body's telling me, what are you doing? You're supposed to be sleeping right now. <laughs> Let's check this out. <clears throat> All right, I'll check it. I'm just reading the email that uh, Glitter sent me, the one that he received from uh, Respawn. This is probably fake. The reason why I'm saying it's fake is because I'm looking at the email address of that person and that is not the email that we would be using. Yeah, that doesn't look right to me. They said they use a, they use, they have an ICQ page for the job interview. I can't believe people are still using ICQ. Uh, let me look up that other name they mentioned. We're doing some detective work right now.
Yeah, that person, the other name that was uh, mentioned in the email, does not exist either. And <laughs> their email, um, when you look down <clears throat> at the very bottom, uh, it says username at right respawn. I'm not going to say the whole thing. That doesn't look right either. It looks like they chose those names to make it seem, sound legitimate to people who don't know. But it's that's not what we would be using. Yeah, that's weird. That pay doesn't make sense either for what they're telling you to do. Like, it, it sounds like this um this listing is for like an entry level person because it says you can apply even if you don't have experience and they pro they're saying they provide some online training if desired that doesn't make sense to me that makes absolutely no sense to me at least on our end i've never heard of doing online training like who has time to do online training for somebody? I, I've never heard of that. It just sounds to me, again, I could be wrong, but it sounds to me like um, they're trying to bait people into this. Usually what uh, listings look like are we're trying to actually not bait more people into a, a listing like to apply we're trying to minimize like everyone applying you know what i mean because then there's too many applicants to look through so we're trying to only get applicants who are um who are qualified for a certain position you know what i mean but this sounds like they're trying to get as many applicants as possible which doesn't make any sense Anyways, yeah, thanks for sending it over. Just be careful out there. <clears throat> Elijah's asking, you're not using any blend mode. Uh, no, I'm not. Just, uh, I just have a pressure sensitivity on. <clears throat> and I have transfer checked on my brush. Uh, Glitter says, yeah, it was weird that Respawn wanted to hire me with my skill level. <clears throat> I mean, EA does have internships. So, you know, that would make more sense, meaning that... But again, they nobody in HR or a hiring manager, I don't believe they would reach out to people for an internship. You know what I mean? It would just be a listing and then people would just apply. No one's going to really reach out. But yeah, for internships, um, of course they, they train you, but it's not, it's like over, it's like, from my experience, it's just through the job, like as you're working day by day, you just get uh, on the job training. It's not like separate. At least for, for what I do. You sink or swim. That's how it works.
Uh, Renee says, speaking on internships, uh, should us, us, should we as students be willing to do unpaid internships? I would. <laughs> um, yeah. I would do it. As long, I mean, I guess it depends on, like, what the contract is or how long that internship is, right? Again, from my experience, usually internships list last for about three months, right? So, like 90 days, so, um, sure, why not? If it's just three months, it'll be a great experience. EA actually pays their interns really well. I was kind of surprised. But at the same time, I think they're very selective about who they get on board as an intern. Yeah, because the intern we got, or we have right now is amazing. But yeah, I, w I would try everything. Um, sure. Anything to put on your resume to build up your portfolio, uh, to build connections with uh, industry professionals. All that stuff is valuable. At the same time, <laughs> always be careful of people who know this and they're trying to take advantage of students right or people without experience they're trying to take advantage of you guys so just be aware that there are people like that and you got you just be careful whenever you sign a contract you got to be extremely careful a contract that like binds you to to something and and says you're going to get there's these penalties if you leave earlier uh, like if you end the contract without fulfilling it those are the ones i'd be careful of in the past um i had contracts but then it wasn't anything like legal binding meaning like um where i would have to pay a fine or anything like that if I left early so it was it was completely fine I just left early whenever I found something better I would just leave <clears throat> I think in America it's more um, in the US it's more uh, it's a bit safer like there's a lot of protection for the employee where you're not like, they can't like bind you to things as easily in America, I think. Uh, it's a lot of it's mostly at will contracts, right? Where uh, the company could get rid of you when they want to and you can li leave when you want as well, which I prefer. Uh, some other countries, like I've talked to certain students and they have these crazy contracts that are really um, only advantageous for the employer it's scary actually because you could get in serious problem like legal issues if you leave early or don't fulfill the contract
But yeah, if it's unpaid, I don't know. I don't see how you could get in real trouble for just leaving. Uh, but yeah, just be careful. Uh, Glitter says, EA really paying their insurance? <laughs> yep, they pay them really well. Again, I was surprised by how much they get paid. They get paid much better than, like, I would say the average person, no like a normal job for an average person. Elijah says, can you maybe give examples on internships that you would recommend? Or explain how we can find some. Uh, I don't know if I have any recommendations on internships. You guys should just uh, take any internship you can, depending on your situation, right? I don't think you should be like extremely picky about it. Obviously, like a uh, internship with a uh, you want to intern at the place you want to work at. That's like ideal, right? Um, but you know, most students are not in ideal situations, so just pick up what you can. <clears throat> also, how do you find internships? Uh, you could just Google it or contact the company's, uh, HR, I guess, or hiring manager. Um, again, you could probably, um, go on the website and email like there should be like an HR email or something like that. Usually again, the larger game companies are the ones that have internships. I'm sure smaller ones do too, but it's uh, either not posted or it's just harder to find. It's some place like EA, I think it's very clear, like their internship application process. Uh, but again, at smaller game companies, that process may not be as clear. I'm going to create some uh, separation between the neck and the body. I noticed that with chickens, they do have this, the feathers are actually kind of different, right where um, the neck area meets the body. So I'm going to try to show that a little bit. By darkening maybe the tips of these feathers. student that's going through an interview process right now for entry-level position um, so yeah we'll see how that goes I won't share the details just in case but maybe later
Uh, Renee says, I hear different things from internships. Some say certain companies just use interns as free labor. I'm sure some of them do. Um, but honestly, like I'd be fine with that if I was a student. I'll be like, use me, but I'm using you guys for my resume and uh, portfolio and to get connections. So that's fine. I remember like when I was a student, um, <laughs> I think I talked about this before in the past, but <clears throat> I know students think a bit differently, obviously, because you guys don't have the experience yet uh, of working in a professional environment. And obviously <clears throat> then you don't understand like how things work, right? Like clear, like clearly, like it's not clear to you how things work. Um, so like, <laughs> My story as being a, a student was I thought I had so many great ideas in my uh, sketchbook, right? I had the sketchbook full of just concepts, like all, all ideas. And I thought my ideas were awesome. <laughs> it's embarrassing to think about now. And so one time, one day I, I approached one of my teachers and I was like, I'm applying to some game companies. But my concern is that if I show these images to them, they might steal my ideas. You know, so how do I protect myself, right? From these companies stealing my ideas, my awesome ideas. <laughs> and he kind of gave me like a weird look at first, but he's like a super nice teacher. So uh, he just gave me, um, he just told me like that he wouldn't worry about it. You know, he, he said it in a nice way where... You know, I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, the, he, I think he said something like, just focus on um, applying and, and uh, seeing how that goes. Like, I think he said something like, it would be a compliment, like if they stole your ideas and if they, if they really thought you had great ideas, then they will hire you instead, right? Why not, why wouldn't they hire you if you have great ideas? instead of just stealing your few ideas, right? So even then I didn't understand like what he was really telling me, but um, in hindsight, yeah, I, I was just being a student. <laughs> like people don't care. I mean, do, do, can they uh, steal your ideas? Yes, they can, but it doesn't matter, right? The point is, is that, um, you can't worry about all that stuff. You just gotta try to get a job. And and most game companies, they're not like that. They don't think that small. Uh, when they're looking to hire somebody, it's because they really, really need someone to fulfill like a position so that they could get moving on a project. They're trying to build up a team, right? So, you know, they're not, they're thinking more big picture when they hire people, especially interns too. Uh, some companies will purposely not take on interns because it's just a pain in the butt, to be honest. Um, if you get interns that are uh, like very incompetent, sorry, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but um, you could imagine like there's different levels of interns, right? So if you get an intern that's like, you really have to babysit, then it could be an extreme pain in the butt for people in the uh, working around them, right? Because then they always have to answer their questions and um, babysit them, basically, right? And nobody wants to do that because we're we are so swamped with work. Um, we don't need additional responsibilities and additional like work. Does that make sense? There's like no, not a specific like intern like person. Do you know what I mean? Who deals with all the interns uh, at most places. They don't have that. Everyone's kind of splitting up their time to uh, train the and, and task out things to the interns. If that makes sense. So it's not like most companies are thinking, oh, we get free labor. This is going to be awesome. That's not really how we think. It's, it's like, it's give and take. 
so we think okay we want qualified interns because they can help right and at the same time we want the interns experience to be good where they could learn uh, a lot of different things about how how the process works the pipeline the art pipeline um just how the interaction works right in meetings how we work with other teams how we work with you know other departments um, that whole thing so we actually want the interns to have a good experience at least here we do with respawn uh, that's that's my experience we're not trying to abuse i mean sometimes can can the um can it be overwhelming for the uh intern it can be but i don't think it's because we're trying to abuse them i just think they're not used to what they're what the demands are right um it could be like a high stress environment uh, which it is usually uh, so if this is all new to you of course you're going to be stressed out of course you're going to have to like spend double the time on something that if you were used to doing it would take half the time right but since you're new to it it's going to take double the time so you're going to feel like you don't have enough time and that you're going to feel pressured right but all that stuff is part of the experience to be honest that's what you should expect when you work at a game company uh, they have high standards high pressure de tight deadlines all that stuff. It's not easy. <laughs> but yeah, you get used to it. Like, the more you do this stuff, I mean, you get used to it. A lot of things you get used to with time. But like you have to really be somebody who is adaptable and who works well with other people because there's a lot of frustrating things that can happen and do happen when you work on a game or something like that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of frustrating things that could happen. Um, but again, keeping your cool and knowing how to work with people, that's very, very important. Because I get, I get frustrated. I still get frustrated sometimes. But it'll only last for like a couple hours. I get over it and then... You know, you always have to stay professional, obviously, even if you're frustrated. And, and show respect to your fellow colleagues. Even if you disagree, you know, like strongly disagree or you get in arguments over things, you still have to be professional. That's the important part. Show respect to people, all of that stuff. Because people disagree all the time on how to uh, solve a problem. Usually it's like everyone agrees usually what the problem is. Uh, most of the time that's usually not the problem it's the problem is everyone has a different opinion about how to solve the problem that's where people start like you know getting art into arguments and things like that And then people complaining about authority. <laughs> yep. Or 
or not feeling recognized for the job they do. There's a lot of stuff like that. And then there's the company politics. I think people who play that game. Uh, Glitter says, I had a couple problems with hiring where they wanted a person who is young and also has over three years experience. Uh, I don't know if you can do that in California, at least. Uh, I don't know. I thought in America you couldn't do that. Maybe they can in other parts of the U.S., actually. In California, you can't ask how old the person is. You can't ask people their age. Yeah. You can't discriminate based off of age. But yeah, I think in others, depends on the state, I guess. I don't think you can even ask for your, um, the, the person's previous salary in California. Not legal, you're not supposed to. Anyways, uh, Elijah says, I believe they, there are also internships in the movie industry as well, like Disney and Pixar, DreamWorks. Uh, I'm sure there are. Yeah. Do your research, guys. I don't know what's going on these days. <laughs> I only know what happened back in the day. I'm not like all you know updated on what's going on with uh with all that Oops.
Glitter says every job hunt I did, they wanted my age. Yeah, you, you're, um, where are you from again, Glitter? You're in the, are you in the Midwest? I forget. Yeah, you're, you're not in California, that's why. Yeah, Oklahoma, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in your situation, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, you're young, so... It's fine. If they hear my age, they'll be like, oh... You don't know what's cool these days, we can't hire you. <laughs> You're a dinosaur. You're just waiting till retirement. That's definitely a, an advantage you guys have as younger people. Um, you know what's cool these days, right? Like, I rely on my intern for that kind of stuff. I'll ask him, like, all right, does is this cool these days? Like, how do pe younger people feel about all this stuff? Because um, I'm obviously out of touch in some ways. I try not to be out of touch, but, you know, just gotta be honest, probably am a bit out of touch with what's cool. Or not just what's cool, what, what, um, just the younger generation, how they feel about certain things, you know? There was this one thing, I'm not going to go into exact detail about it. But there was this one thing that had to do with a uh, character's hair color. Even like, um, again, not going to say specifics, but hairstyles, right? So hairstyles. So we were designing a new character, like a, a new legend. And we were talking about the hairstyle, the specific hairstyle that this character had and the hair color. And there are a lot of issues with that, if that makes sense. Because, you know, what is appropriate to do? Like, what makes, you know, should this race, this specific race, have this kind of hairstyle? Or is it does not make any sense, right? Should this kind of race have this color hair? Uh, anyways, with those things, <laughs> gotta ask, like, of course, there's a variety of people we ask, but um, yeah, we definitely ask uh, younger generation people to get an idea of what's appropriate, what's what people, how people feel these days about those things, because we definitely do not want to offend people. Yeah. And to be honest, like sometimes when you're from an older generation, because uh, things are changing so quickly, right? Um, we may just not be aware of certain things, if that makes sense. Someone like myself, I'll speak for myself. Uh, you know, sometimes we're not as aware. Um, and some things we got to learn.
Uh, Glitter says I'm going to turn 30 in a couple months. I worry sometimes that I won't get hired for my age. Nah, 30 is nothing. You're still a baby. <laughs> I'm just joking, but yeah, 30 is fine. Uh, Elijah says you look very young. Uh, and even 30, that's still young. To glitter, Elijah saying to glitter. Uh, glitter says, I just overthink things and start panicking for no reason, but thanks, Blaze. Yeah. Well, actually, looking too, <laughs> looking too young for a, um, I mean, th these are just my thoughts, but looking too young when you're trying to get a director position isn't to your advantage, actually. So like for art directors, right? In my opinion, when you look like a kid, it's like they they start questioning things, you know what I mean? So I don't know, <clears throat> in that situation, it's not really an advantage. Uh, yeah. If that makes sense. They're like, who is this kid? Did we, did this kid just join the wrong uh, Zoom meeting? What's this kid doing on here? <laughs> Actually, I had that um, reaction before. It was with a, um, I think it was with a Chinese game company. I'm obviously not gonna say who it was, but um. Yeah, it's not for someone I actually worked with. Uh, but it was an interview I had with the Chinese game company and Asians in particular, I would say, um, care more about what the person looks like. I'm talking about Asians, like Asian Asians, not Asian Americans, but like people from Asia. They care about like how old you look. They actually prefer people that look older if it's for a lead position. Uh, so when I came on, they're like, they had the surprise look and they actually told me that I look super young, which means like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> We're not gonna listen to you. You're, you look like a kid. Why should we respect you? Like respect is directly correlated with how old you look. Isn't that weird? I mean, it makes complete sense to me because I lived in Asia before. I understand what they what that means. I'm not saying it's right, but that's just the culture. That's just how it is. So even like when you get married to somebody, uh, if the husband looks really young, they think it's weird. Like people think it's weird. Like older people think it's weird. Like you're marrying a kid. He, he, he looks like he's, he's in a high school. So people in Asia actually try to look older, like some people, to get respect, if that makes sense. It's weird. You gotta age yourself to get respect. <laughs> get some wrinkles. Anyways. In America, it's like, I mean, I'm sure this is everywhere, but you know, people in lead positions always try to dress nicer, like a collared shirt or something like that. Uh, all that stuff is silly to me, but I'm just a weirdo. Uh, I think that's, you know, it's just a game you play. <clears throat> it's silly just because you're wearing different types of clothes doesn't make you more respectable does it but uh, you know overall the average person treats you different depending on their perception like you know of you like what you look like so that's the game you got to play I guess but I don't want to play that game
you guys, I'm sure you guys know, like, even when you go out and you, like, dress differently, you know, your dress, if you dress super nice and, you know, all that stuff, people just treat you differently, like, at the store. I notice that all the time. Elijah says, just need to train and have big muscles so people will respect you. <laughs> it depends. Some people see that, like, look down on people like that, too. Like, in America, they call you a meathead, right? Like, all you think about is, like, working out. So some people actually look, look down on that. You're just, like, a, a mass of meat. Nothing else, nothing else. <laughs> so yeah, it depends. In Asia, actually, they don't, they don't care about that stuff. They care about like your wallet size <laughs> and like how, like your position. That's what they care about in Asia. It's like, what do you do? What's your position at your company? And like, how rich are you? That's what they care about. So it depends again, it's the culture. In California, they care about, I remember when I was younger, I'm just speaking, again, I don't know how, if older people are like this, but uh, people care about cars here a lot. They look at what car you drive, like generally speaking. Like when I lived in the Midwest, nobody cared about cars, meaning it was, it was like, yeah, overall people don't really care about what you drive in the Midwest, but over here in California, they're very, uh, uh into that. They will sacrifice everything to have a nice car. They'll be freaking poor, but they'll drive a nice car. <laughs> all to get some respect fake respect from fake people you guys see how I feel about all that <laughs> Glitter says, in Germany, a lot of people gave me dirty looks because they thought I was Turkish, even though I'm an Armenian. Hmm. Elijah says, well, actually, do you think people look also on the look and the experience? I mean, a military background can influence studios to hire you and give you responsibilities, no? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if uh, having a military background helps. How would that help? Because 
they assume you're disciplined. But again, I don't know how that helps with uh, the, in the entertainment industry. Um, not sure. I don't think that will help you or hurt you. I honestly don't know. Uh, Elijah says, for example, you just seem to say that people really judge you on how you look. Well, again, in California, you, you can't ask for a... You can't ask for a picture, I guess, of the person before the interview. But I guess they could still judge you when they they see you during the interview. I, I don't know if that's avoidable. Um, yeah. Why do they uh, not like Turkish people in Germany? Is it just like history stuff? Stuff that happened in, in history? Or is it like current stuff? Uh, by the way, if you guys could give me a like, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, Elijah. Uh, Glitter says, uh, the Germans are like the Americans with the Mexicans, moving in and taking jobs. Oh, so the Turkish people are, they, the Germans feel like the Turkish people are coming in and taking their jobs. It's It depends on the American, right, Glitter? Like, for me, um, I have no problem with, uh, Mexicans coming into America. I think it's a good thing. I mean, obviously there's problems, right? Like, but it's not the it's not the Mexicans fault, right? In my opinion, it's just how the government handles all that stuff. Uh, that's the issue in my opinion again. Sorry, just my opinion. But um but yeah, like I have nothing against like Mexicans. Uh, I I like that they're here. Um but again, I could understand why certain Americans have issues with it. Um, yes, it's all understandable. Um, uh, 
it just depends on uh, your situation. Yeah. Uh, Blasphemer says we like Turkish people. Where are you? Blasphemer, are you from Germany? I just know Glitter used to live in Germany. Um, Blasphemer says some Germans probably think that way. It's not a majority though. Uh, Blasphemer says, yeah, I'm German. You Turkish hater? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, again, of course, it's not everybody, right? Just like I'm saying with, uh, in America, it's not like everybody hates Mexicans. Of course not. Uh, that is not true at all. But there are a group of people that, um, you know, just don't want... Again, I don't think they have a thing against Mexicans. I don't think that's what it is. I think those people who have an issue are the issues with the government. Like the way they're handling the situation. I think that's more of what's going on. For the most part, I'm saying. But like, if you're asking, so, so Glitter, if you're saying like, you know, going back to your initial comment, if you're saying that people kind of give you like a dirty look, like that's what you're saying, I think, um, for whatever reasons they're thinking of, does that happen in America with, um, towards Hispanics or Mexicans? Yes, that does happen. Can't lie about that. Like meaning, uh, People don't like hate them. Like there, there may be people who don't have any issue with them, but do they like look down on them? Some, some groups of people, yes, they do. You know, that does happen. I mean, if you're honest, you're gonna, you're gonna say that there are groups of people that um, don't respect Hispanics, uh, think they take on jobs that no one else wants to do, uh, things like that. That happens. Or those views are exist. Again, obviously, not everybody, please, not everybody thinks that way. Just saying, I acknowledge that exists. <clears throat> I actually live in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. Glitter says, my grandma hated the Turkish. <laughs> so she hated you, huh, Glitter? I'm just kidding. Uh, Blasphemer says, racism, racism and xenophobia sadly exists almost everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it does, for sure. I mean, different levels of it, right? Uh, let's not, like, uh, paint everyone with the same brush, right? 
like different levels of everything, right? Uh, we don't live in a perfect world and we're not perfect either, right? None of, nobody's perfect. Um, Glitter says everyone is racist. I hate people who put pineapple on pizza. <laughs> I like pineapple on pizza. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes. Like Hawaiian pizza, sometimes. Uh, Blasphemer says, that's no racism, though. That's just normal. <laughs> it's normal to hate people who eat pineapple on their pizza. Yeah, you can't even be like honest. These people can't be like real these days. To be on, it feels like, because um, if you be you're being real, you can uh get canceled just because of how you you're not perfect. If you're real about how you feel about certain things, you'll get canceled these days. So people are so afraid of being honest these days. It's weird. We all have to be, think like everybody else and be perfect at the same time. Can't people have a chance to learn? And they're just throwing stones at everybody. Like everyone else is per. You guys are perfect. You've done nothing wrong in your life. I just think it's crazy. They went over, I feel like they went overboard with it. I shouldn't even talk about this right now. Uh, forget it. That's probably like the one thing I shouldn't be talking about. says PC culture ruining everything. Blasphemer says some people hide some racial or radical BS opinions behind their feelings. Be right back. I'm canceling Bernie on Twitter real quick. Awesome. Uh, Glitter says I like boneless pizza. Well, I just got canceled on Twitter. Yeah, this chicken will cancel you for eating chicken, barbecue chicken on your pizza. Relating it back to art, people get canceled for uh, by some people for using reference. You know what I'm talking about? You use reference? Photo reference for your images? You're canceled. Or you paint over 3D assets? 
you paint over photos, you're canceled. <laughs> There's still some artists that I talk to, like students especially, where they're like, they look down on people who use photos or paint over photos or use photos heavily in their art. Uh, yeah. Like, you're not a real artist. <laughs> you're a phony. Yeah, you're using the same pose as Ref. You're not a real artist. That's what Glitter said. Uh, Blasphemer says, but everyone uses reference. Yeah, it's just people have different standards, you know? And then it's fine to have your own standards, right? But to press that on other people, your expectations, your standards, your ideals on other people is where I feel like you know, you're crossing the line, right? As an American, a freedom loving American. <laughs> That's how I feel. It's like, sure, you could think whatever you want. Just leave me alone. Don't tell me what to do. I mean, you could think whatever you want and I'm fine with that. And you could do whatever you want to do in your family. That's fine. Teach your kids, raise your kids however you want to. But just don't press that on me and my family. <laughs> don't tell me how to draw. <laughs> don't tell me what programs I can and can't use. Don't tell me I can't draw on the iPad. getting hungry do you guys cook or you have your parents cook for you guys or what do you guys do you guys eat out all the time what do you guys do tell me I'm curious Glitter says, I miss the 90s. Elijah says, I miss the 70s, actually. <laughs> that was a great period for the film industry. And just interesting. 70s, huh? Elijah says, want to share with me sushi online? Oh, I like sushi, yeah. Favorite is uh, Yellowtail, actually. I like uh, I like um, salmon too, but the problem is a salmon is farmed salmon, which I do not like for health reasons. It tastes wonderful, but I try to avoid farmed salmon. I'm picky. <laughs> I'm spoiled. Uh, Glitter says me cook. Nope. I actually wish I had more time to get into cooking. I just don't have the time, but I think when I'm older, not that I'm not already old to you guys, but when I, when I grow up, <laughs> I want to actually get into cooking.
It's fun. When I grow up, that's what I want to do. When I retire, I plan on retiring, retiring early, by the way. But that doesn't mean um, I'm going to stop working. I guess that, I don't know. I just want to work like part time because <clears throat> I like working. Uh, I just don't want to work full time. <clears throat> and then I'll, that's when I'll start my cooking channel. <laughs> cooking stream. And then that's when I'll talk about back in the day I used to do a stream on concept art. But now I'm into cooking. I create art that you can eat. Elijah says, well, Asian food is so tasty, nothing better than sushi. Yeah, I really like sushi, good sushi. Elijah, where are you from? <clears throat> Blasphemer says, I don't know, cooking is pretty easy. Oh, it's easy for you? That's good. Most guys around here, or actually even girls too these days, uh, they don't know how to cook because everyone's just so busy. When I lived by myself, I cooked quite a bit, like I think almost every day, yeah. Renee says, everyone cooks in my household, though we don't always eat each other's food since we don't always like the same things. If I add two drops of hot sauce, no one will eat it. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So everyone just cooks their own meal, huh? <clears throat> I do think like, Cooking your own meals is a good thing. It's just healthier than eating out. Like whenever I eat out for like two days straight, I just feel weird. It doesn't feel good. Who knows what they're putting in there? Like they're probably using like the cheapest, cheapest uh, ingredients, right? <clears throat> uh, Glitter says, I want to retire when I turn 80. <laughs> I just... I just want to live till I'm 80. I don't know. Uh, I actually don't. When I say retire, like I said, it's just working part time. I think I'm always going to try to do something like some kind of work uh, just to stay active. But who knows when I turn 60, I might be like, forget this. I just want to lay around doing nothing. <laughs> I'm sure my energy levels will completely change. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Elijah says you should cook some of those chickens you're drawing right now. Yep. No, they're my pets. I can't do that. <laughs> Me and my kids, we agreed that um, the only way, only situation where we would consider, even consider eating the chickens would be if it was a life and death situation where we're starving to death. That's the only situation. <laughs> we talked about that. Uh, Blasphemer says, today we will have spicy dragon chicken on Cuisine with Bernie. <laughs> oh man, that'll be sad. Uh, Elijah says, uh, was born in Belgium, but I moved from Belgium at 15 years old. Wait, so where do you live right now? 
Uh, Elijah says, well, Glitter, you want to retire at 80 and already complaining now that you're only 30. <laughs> Belgium. I don't know too much about Belgium. Uh, I just know Belgium chocolate. <laughs> I think that's all I know. Is that right? Belgium chocolate? Is that even right? I think that's all I know about it. Sorry, I'm a uh, dumb American. I don't know enough about what's going on in the world. Expe if you're from California, that's especially true for most Californians. Like, Californians don't know anything else that's going outside, going on outside of California. They don't even know the states. They're like, what? Illinois? They call it Illinois, too, because they don't know. Illinois? Where is that? Is that a different country? Uh, okay. Glitter says, in my family, none of my family members are past 85 years, giving me enough time to play some Halo games before I kick the bucket. <laughs> uh, Elijah says, I live in Israel already eight years. Wow, cool. I have a student who's from Israel, too, right now. Awesome. How do you like it in Israel, Elijah? Uh, Blasphemer said... Or why did you move to Israel from Belgium? That's my question. Uh, Blasphemer said, that's all you need to know. Elijah says, chocolate, oh my god, OMG. Blasphemer says, they also invented French fries in Belgium. Did they really? I didn't know that. <laughs> I think Elijah's being a uh, sarcastic there. Uh, oh, Belgian waffles. Yes, that's the other thing I know. Oh, it's all food related. Sorry. <laughs> I don't even know what the difference is. I think they're thicker, right? They're bigger. Elijah says, well, actually, I'm eating sushi, so why do you guys try to make regret Belgian food? Is sushi good in Israel? Interesting. When I used to live in Illinois, the uh, best sushi place, we thought, we thought it was good when I was eating there. Uh, just because that's all you have, right? But then when I visited California again in between... I was like, oh my god, I can't eat uh, eat sushi in Illinois. It's just nasty compared to what you get in California. I couldn't eat it again. It's just, I couldn't pay good money for, uh, you know, mediocre uh, sushi. But, like, for people who don't know, like, they just, that's all they have. They're like, this is great. This is so fresh. Even though it's not fresh at all. <laughs> uh, Elijah says sushi are a no good idea, but still like it. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on what kind of sushi you like. Like, if it's not the raw kind, right? Then I guess it could be just as good as any, like any other place. Because, like the baked sushi or something that's kind of cooked. Um, then it could be just as good, I guess. But when it comes to like the raw fish, right? You need to get it super fresh. That's when it's like really, really good. And you can really tell the difference. Blasphemer says, well, California is like the El Dorado of sushi. Hard to compete with that, I guess. Yeah, it is. But even here, there's so many sushi places that are nasty, to be honest. Um, but again, it's because the standards are so much higher here. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go eat lunch. I'm starving. Uh, thanks for hanging out again this Monday. It was fun. 
I always like ending at talking about food. So, so that's always good. I hope you guys all have a great week. And I'll see you guys here uh, same time next Monday, alright? See ya. Bye.